Should we be thinking about buying Apple, AAPL, or Microsoft, MSFT? Hey guys, Joey here, Top Tier Mysel, Trader in Philips Securities. And in this video, I'll be diving into these two stocks. And in case you don't know, these two stocks are pretty much the two highest weightage of the S&P 500 index. Two of these stocks alone accounts for more than 10% of the entire S&P 500 index, right? So these are very popular stocks and they get us quite often on them as well. So let's dive into these two stocks and see which is a better buy right now. Both looks a little bit different, right? Uh, you could be buying for different reasons as well, but we'll dive into the charts to see, is it Apple or is it Microsoft? Let's go. All right, so this is Apple right here. And in case you don't know, Apple and Microsoft are some of my two favorite stocks, right? That you definitely want to have in your portfolio for the longer term, all right? And um, you can see that for Apple right now, we have traded lower over the past one over a week, all right? And there are some signs of an opportunity coming back again, all right? So let's take a look at where we are right now for Apple. You can see that we are trading at about $185, all right? So there is this very, very, very key resistance level that you want to take note of for Apple, that would be the $200. So $200 has been a very critical psychological resistance level. You can see somewhere around July last year, Apple kind of like approached this level. We traded below for like two weeks and we sold down, swing down, swing all the way down in November. And of course the market rebounded, right? Due to talks about rate cuts this year, the market rebounded. Apple also rebounded and went all the way up to that same, two hundred dollars you can see somewhere around two hundred dollars we also you know kind of like saw a little bit of a bearish candlestick you can see right up here some bearish candlesticks whereby we got what we call candles with long upper shadow or long wick up that shows that sellers are coming back to push prices down this is what we call something like a doji right over here right near that 200 dollars level as well and after that you can see we consolidated and we started to sell back down again right so that is the 200 dollars very critical psychological resistance level that you want to watch right? i think that if we were to break this 200 level right maybe in the next few weeks or maybe next one or two or three months right maybe when the rate cuts finally come apple would be really bullish we have pretty much break what we call a multi-year high all right break multi-year high and it has really turned into an uptrend. You can see for Apple, right? We look at what we call the um, 100 days moving average, the red line, and the blue line will be the 200 days moving average. So both of these lines have started to point up red above the blue, all right, since like April, May last year. It has already turned to an uptrend and it has pushed higher, but we're still below this 200. But once we break this 200, I think it could set up a whole new uh, momentum upside could be raised, targets could be raised to like 220, 250, and that would be a whole new level up again, right? So let's take a look at, you know, what are the supports that have, you know, came out over the past few months? So you can see that for the 200 days moving average, this blue line, right? let me just remove this right over here. You can see that this blue line is what we call the 200 days moving average. And somewhere around like October, we traded lower. We neared the 200 days moving average, which is about the 170 level. So let's just put another support somewhere around here. That would be a support level. All right, you can see a little bit of resistance, uh, support, support, rebounded. And we have traded up to 200 and now we are making our way back down again. So I think that the support level could be anywhere from about one, let's just put 170, right? Anywhere from 170 to, to 180, all right? And it seems like sellers are pushing it back down. But I think that some support might have came out um, slightly earlier at about the $180, right? 180, let me just show you right over here. You can see that it was a little bit of a resistance level as well. Look at this, right? Resistance, resistance. We were actually consolidating from 170 to 180. Pump. Finally, we broke 180, went all the way up, and we are now back down again. So 180, which also coincides with where the 200 days. Can you see the blue line? This blue line is right over here. So I think over the next one, two weeks, it might just consolidate there, stabilize a little bit, all right? And eventually when the short term trend like the 20 days moving average the green line starts to maybe flatten out or maybe even start to point up i think that's where it could lead the reversal back up towards the 200 dollars level so it could be a good opportunity all right right now on dips for apple as it hits towards 
the 180 or maybe even 170. I'm not too sure exactly where, but I think these are all very, very good levels whereby some bargain hunting can come back again, all right, for Apple. All right, so you can put this stock in your watch list as well. So let's dive into like Microsoft to see what's the difference, right? So for Apple, yes, you know, kind of like traded lower is a little bit of a bargain buy, all right, by Microsoft, it looks a little bit different. I think it's not really, you know, came back down in fact it went a little bit higher but let's see uh, how it can play out for microsoft as well let's go so this is microsoft stock code msft right here trading at about 375 dollars so is it a better buy compared to apple or right, how is this different well let's take a look at microsoft you can see that for microsoft it looks a little bit different for for apple remember we were actually below this very critical 200 dollars psychological resistance level that we just couldn't get above over the past six months to eight months right but for Microsoft, you can see that the trend has started to turn up. Same thing like Apple around April and May. All right, we have turned into an uptrend. So the form what we call higher highs, higher lows, and a bit of profit taking somewhere around July, August. Same like Apple, due to talks about you know rate hikes again. But we saw a pretty good move somewhere around November, October, all the way up. And you can see that for Microsoft, it's slightly different because we have breached this very critical resistance levels this resistance is around that 350 360 that was pretty much where we were just about two years back as well before the entire uh you know rate highs and inflationary pressure and all that so that was pretty much the multi-year high two years back we have breached both of these two levels 350 to 360 and we have gone on higher so it's a little bit different from apple whereby we are still below this $200 uh, resistance whereby we have not been able to clear above. All right, so Microsoft can see that after breaking this 360 level over the past like one month plus, right, one, two months plus, this 360 has formed into what we call a support level. So resistance turns support and the trend, which you know, right over here you can see was an uptrend since like April, May. It is still in an uptrend, 100 days moving average, the red line above the 200 days moving average blue line both of them are still pointing up as we are consolidating higher at a higher support level right so that's a good thing so it looks a bit different and i would say that for microsoft it could be a pretty good uh, you know move up as well in terms of more upside happening fast because we have breached the resistance and breaking the resistance is one thing staying above it is one thing right we don't want to like come back down again below 360 or below 350 if that happens then we might see it you know go back down maybe to like 320 again because that's where the previous support will but right now over the past one month you can see that we have found that higher support right so the support actually got higher right just by looking at the price itself support here support support and now this has came in as a support around the 360 all right and what would be the temporary resistance level maybe about 380 it seems like the past one month all right 380 seems to be a little bit of a west buy i mean sellers are coming back and see it's consolidated here swing up swing down swing up right you might just move up and down from 360 to 380 and eventually if you're to break that 380 i think potentially maybe to 400 or 420 450 that could be where upside targets could be revised higher right so this is microsoft right i think it looks quite good right it just looks a little bit different for apple i think both of them are good buys but they're for different reasons apple is more of it being a bargain yes kind of like deep to some of those pretty attractive support levels right we are not able to break the resistance but now it has dipped down it looks attractive that's where you could get it for microsoft it has bridged you know the resistance that turned support we are consolidating at the higher support Unfortunately, it's a bit more expensive. I mean, it didn't really came back down, but that is where it also provides an opportunity to get in, right, to ride even more upside, as long as this new support were to hold. Right? Like I mentioned, right, 350, 360, these are all pretty good support right now. And as long as we hold above them, there could still be more upside. The uptrend remains intact. So there we have it guys, I've done an analysis on Apple, AAPL and Microsoft MSFT, pretty much the two largest cap stock that accounts for more than 10% uh, in terms of the S&P 500 index. All right, so I hope you have a clearer picture on what to do for each of them, how they're different and what are some of the key levels that you could actually time your entry to get into right even more upside. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, guys, go ahead to um, give me a like, all right, smash the subscribe button as well. That will really help out the channel. And thank you so much for doing that so that you will not miss any videos like this. And if you want to find out, guys, a little bit more on the entire strategy in terms of the one good trend, all right? So what we believe is that one good trend, like, I mean, like for Microsoft right away here, just one good trend in terms of a revoker to catch it, to write it, and to maximize your profits along with the trend. 
that is really what you need to you know see your portfolio grow to see your profits you know go to double digits ROI and all that uh, if you want to you know do that if you want to learn how to pick trends how to know what stocks are in a good trend and after knowing what stocks when you get in when you get out and how we have a system to guide in guide us to get in and get out as well you can attend one of those free web class or right, webinar that we're still running right so please the link below click on it register for this free webinar where i'll share with you a little bit more on the entire one good trend strategy right, so joey here thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon